you go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Simons. I work for the Harvard Catalyst Informatics Group, and I'm here to talk about Shrine and the Shrine 4.x series of releases. Um, so um, we have a lot of inspiration for these releases. A um, uh, little history around our major version changes for Shrine. Um, Shrine 2.0 was in preparation for large networks, being able to scale Shrine to large networks. You've heard about the ACT network a few times today, um, and there's a working group about it tomorrow as well. Um, when Shrine was chosen for the ACT network, we realized that we wouldn't be able to scale with the uh, older technology, um, messaging technology that we had that was based on um, Zach this morning, actually presented uh, and mentioned his SPIN project. Shrine used to be built on top of SPIN. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, and we had switched over to, um, what's the right term? Uh, I don't know, uh, like more industry standard um, inter-node communication. Um, using RESTful services at the time, uh, but it was still synchronous. So one node on the network, if it was behaving slowly or in error, could really bring down the entire network. So for Shrine 2.0, we switched over to asynchronous communication so that results could trickle in to the uh, researcher as they were ready. Um, Shrine 3.0 came on while we were, so Shrine 2 was sort of in preparation for ACT and scaling to ACT. Shrine 3 was um, inspired by uh, ACT users and our desire to uh, make ACT as easy to use for them as possible. And so that's when we redesigned and rebuilt the Shrine web client that you saw a few slides of earlier and that helped inspire the new I2B2 UI. We learned a lot in the ACT network, um, and that really helped us solidify our goals for the next architectural shift for Shrine. Um, and uh, here's a few of the highlights. So um, I am also super stoked about SAML. Um, uh, actually, SAML is one of the first things I ever worked on as a professional engineer back in 2000, uh, 2001. Uh, I was working with SAML 1.0, so I'm, I'm very happy to have it here uh, for Shrine and I2B2 and, and Transmart as well. Um, so we want to leverage authentication standards so we, that, that we can get into those hospitals, those institutions that, um, that weren't able to use I2B2 before because of, uh, because of their requirement for shibboleth or for other um, more secure authentication mechanisms. We also want to provide finer grained authorization for Shrine so that we can introduce role-based role access control, not just for the Shrine UI, but also for um, uh, additional applications that we hope will start being built as part of my next bullet point here, which is um, the, uh, really a platform for I2B2 and Shrine as an ecosystem. Um, and I think this is all enabled by SAML and by single sign-on, um, where we can have Shrine and I2B2 and users seamlessly transferring between the two applications. We can have other groups building applications on top of the I2B2 API, on top of the Shrine API. Um, they can build inside of the plugin framework. They can build outside of the plugin framework. Um, and uh, I think we'll, we'll, we're really going to see, this is really going to be, I think, uh, a, a huge growth period for, for Shrine and I2B2. Um, the robustness of the network, um, switching over to asynchronous messaging helped a lot and we have further to go with that and I'll talk a little bit about that on one of my next slides. Of course all of this is for the researchers and the research community so we want to provide the features in Shrine that uh, will help help the researchers do their research um, and I'll mention uh, and I'll have a, a quick screencast that Anupama just whipped up for me <laughs> over lunch 
about um, event-based queries, temporal queries uh, in I2B2. And um, Shrine is hard to install. I2B2 has been hard to install for a long time, um, but we, we're, we're all working hard to make it a lot easier. I'm really excited to hear that there's a 10-minute demo in, install of I2B2 now, and we have a um, uh, Docker composition for Shrine as well that allows you to get up and running with I2B2 and Shrine uh, in a matter of minutes if you're familiar with the Docker environment. So specifically for 4.0, uh, Shrine is going to be releasing um, uh, basic single sign-on. So we're using, we're integrating with, um, well, we're implementing SAML uh, and we're using on our service provider side the uh, Shibboleth, uh, Shibboleth platform, um, uh, which I think is in use at Pitt as well, um, and that I2B2 worked with too. Um, so there's a few configuration changes that come with, with this for, for Shrine, and uh, a large documentation effort that will help describe sort of what single sign-on is, how you're supposed to use it with Shrine, how you can set up Apache and Shrine and I2B2 together um, for, for single sign-on. Uh, one of the important motivating factors here is really, I'll say single sign-on a lot, but it's really the institutional authentication. Um, Harvard has recently switched its policy over so that all applications developed for Harvard require institutional login. Um, so for Shrine to be um, compliant with Harvard, we had to do this, but we also really wanted to because uh, I2B2 was doing it and we wanted to, to, to really help enable that, that ecosystem there. Um, the other feature coming out with 4.0 is three event queries. So when Shrine implemented temporal queries, uh, we rebranded them as event-based queries and we simplified them to only allowing two, one relationship between two events. Um, we got feedback that the third event, I2B2, I think right now you can do as many events as you want to describe, um, but we pared it down to just the two events for sort of the basic use case, and we got a lot of feedback that the third event is really important, so we uh, so we're adding that as part of 4.0. We also have uh, reworked our query definition. This is internal to Shrine. It doesn't affect how we communicate with I2B2 at all. Um, but in order to adopt th the third event for the queries, we needed a, um, a refactoring of how we represent and how we store queries within Shrine. Um, so, 4.1, this is what's coming next for Shrine. We actually ended up splitting out a lot of features that we had that we had intended for 4.0 because we really wanted to get single sign-on out there and we really wanted to get the three event queries out there. But we had made a lot of progress on external messaging, which is uh, addressing that robustness goal that I had mentioned in my first slide. Right now, the Shrine hub is a single point of failure uh, for Shrine. If the hub is down, the queries that are sent out, the results that are sent out by the nodes on the edge of the network, th those can be lost. Um, so we want to rely on, we want to replace our proprietary uh, home, homebrew uh, messaging format with an external messaging format that leverages um, especially cloud native uh, like Amazon SQS, and we're also doing a free open source version um, using Kafka. So what this will allow us to do is run, rely on Amazon uh, for the most part to, to run and keep up our messaging systems so that if the hub were to go down and users were sending out queries, all those queries would queue up in the messaging system, and as soon as the hub came back out, those queries would, would be broadcast throughout the network. Likewise, right now, if the hub were down and institutions were sending results back, those results would be lost if the hub was down. But 
with this external messaging system, we'll be able to keep those results uh, and deliver them uh, once the hub comes back up. Uh, I mentioned before we want to do some administrative cleanup, um, especially for our documentation where Shrine has a lot of documentation on how to set up I2P2 and how to set up Apache and how to set up Tomcat. And um, we've slimmed down our customization of those to the point where now we can rely on external documentation for that. So in order to set up Apache for, um, for single sign-on, you can read the Apache single sign-on documentation, which is um, written by the experts on that. Of course, we're going to continue our usability improvements, especially with introducing uh, same financial encounter-based queries for, for the Shrine UI. Um, I do have a quick demo here that I'll try and show. So Jeff showed his, oh, well, let me pause this for just one second. Um, Jeff showed his version of single sign-on, and I'm going to show um, the Shrine version of it. So this is, I've tried to go to the Shrine user interface here, and I was unauthenticated, so I've been issued a challenge and redirected to the Harvard Medical School um, identity provider. This is my actual ID and um, password here, and uh, if I sign in, I get directly into the new, well, into the Shrine user interface, and I'm just demonstrating here that we can run queries uh, when we're in this situation. And um, Shrine will be implementing or will be able to receive SAML attributes um, in, in the SAML assertion. So if your identity provider can provide roles, when we start implementing, um, when we provide authorization hooks for um, for our advanced authorization feature that we're working on, uh, we'll be able to leverage those, uh, th those, those assertions from the identity provider. Um, I also want to show quickly, whoops, is it down or up? There it is. Um, this is a three event query uh, or temporal query. And you also get to see the uh, auto suggest and search. Uh, one thing that I'll mention that um, I think is a really valuable part of the I2B2 UI, the new I2B2 UI and the Shrine UI is that um, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, or how, how we can make this, how we can make qu queries human readable. Um, and so that's where you see the inspiration for the first occurrence of event two and we try and make it very prose-like there. Does this actually run on a pump? Do you have results? Okay, great. Okay, great. So that's a three event query, also known as temporal query in I2B2. Oh, wait, back to my slides. Oops. Okay, so what's the catch? There is a catch here with the 4.x series. Um, we did name it 4.x and not 3. something. Um, we are targeting new networks with this release. It will not be backwards compatible with previous versions of Shrine. 
In other words, we won't be able to have mixed mode networks. Um, this has happened a few times in Shrine's history. Uh, we've avoided it while we were deep into the um, act support um, uh, so that we could roll out updates of Shrine to individual sites while without coordinating the entire network to do an upgrade. In this case, because of the messaging system change, we're, we will be unable to do that. Um, we're also not currently planning to do a data upgrade path, although it is possible. We're not focusing our efforts on that right now. So existing networks that adopt Shrine 4.0 would be at risk of uh, losing their historical data, the previous query data, um, unless we or someone else does work to do that translation. Um, we're 4.0 is we want to get it out there. We want people to see SAML and get their get their uh, feet wet with uh, implementing that, um, integrating that into their institutions. But we're not really expecting 4.0 to go into any known production environments. Not that it can't go into a production environment. It's just that Harvard Harvard Catalyst isn't involved in a, a specific network that we're planning to roll 4.0 out into. Um, but 4.1 is the target release for, for new networks to adopt. We're planning on establishing a Harvard network, uh, uh, reestablishing the Harvard network at some point soon, and 4.1 will be our, um, uh, our target release for that. Uh, 4.0 is currently, it's through feature testing, and we're right now in scalability and performance testing, and we're expecting to release that in mid-October, in just a few weeks. And 4.1 through, maybe maybe there'll be more than 4.1 in this series. Um, we'll, we should be rolling those out continuously throughout 2023. And that's it. Any questions? Yes, in the back. Yes. Yeah, so the, the question is, um, have we considered having only the hub running the UI? Um, and the answer is yes, we have. And we think that this release of Shrine will, um, will be the one that will be able to support multiple different types of network topologies. Uh, I didn't mention topologies in the past uh, earlier, but Shrine has gone through several different types of networks. We started off as a fully meshed system where every node would talk to every other node. Um, that was really difficult for us to scale, especially with firewall rules and certificate exchanges and all of that. So we switched in Shrine 2.0 to a hub and spoke model um, where the hub was re essentially responsible for routing all of the messages and the spokes, the, the nodes on the network would all run their UI and query entry point and adapter. Um, we think that with single sign-on that we could support uh, federated login so that we could, I'm sorry. So we could use in common or we can use, SAML has all sorts of protocols for allowing users to select which identity provider they want to authenticate with. So one could en envision a network where um, Harvard Catalyst or whoever is responsible for running, for running the network would be administering the hub and the query entry point and the UI and the ontology. And the only thing that the nodes would have to do is run the Shrine adapter and their research data warehouse ITB2. Um, but you'd still be able to, with single sign-on, be able to log into your local institution using your Harvard key or your, um, I forget what they called PIT, uh, the, the PIT one, but we'd be able to redirect you to your institution to do institutional login and then transfer that session back over to Shrine. Um, uh, where we have some ways to go before we can accomplish that, but, um, but that's gonna be possible. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.